What's up guys, Ray Rowney here, uh, fucking, you want some fighting game content? I'm doing another Mortal Kombat 12 video today, we're actually doing my actual wish list for the game. Last up, uh, the video, hello? Last video we did was a prediction roster, and it's actually doing super fucking well. Last I saw I had over 50 views. Jesus fucking Christ! That's incredible, thank you so much for that. That was who I honestly think is gonna be in the game, but this, this right here, this is who, what, my, this is my wish list for the game. People I actually want in there, the people who I will, I'm craving in the next Mortal Kombat game. And I even have some DLC. And I remember saying, no, oh, DLC, how dare you die? It's just how it is in the modern context. I'm not a big fan of it, but it is a thing. And it is a cool way to bring in some people who may not have been ready by the time the game was out, or just some fucking surprises. And I got some big surprises on the main roster and on the DLC roster. And what we have here for the actual roster, let's talk about the size here. It's so big. There are 35 characters for this main roster. We got 16 good guys, 16 bad guys, and three neutral guys. Three characters were essentially neutral. Now also, I apologize for how scuffed this is. I tried making this all pretty. Not just the question marks, but like the images behind it for the actual roster page here. It did not end up looking too crazy good, but I, I did my best. I'm not I'm not a professional YouTuber. You see that subscriber count? Who the fuck Fucking is 223 that or whatever it's at right now. Does that does that sound professional to you? It ain't. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get into it. Right off the bat, we have the essential good guys, like no real surprises. It's just like people, it's like, yeah, no fucking kidding they're gonna be in there. So let's talk about number one, Fire God Liu Kang. He's obviously gonna be in there. If not Fire God, some form of Liu Kang. It's just, it, you, I don't have to say much about it. He was literally, he's been the guy outside of the ninjas, Scorpion and Sub-Zero. He's like the face of Mortal Kombat, especially with the ending of Mortal Kombat 11 and Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath. You know, he's a big name here. And uh, going right next to him, if you got Liu Kang, you got Kung Lao. Every day of the week, he is there as well. This guy, arguably another face of Mortal Kombat, especially lately, and the fan perspectives from the scene, we gotta have Johnny Cage. Johnny Cage is gonna be in the game, no doubt, no fucking question about it, as is Raiden. Now, quick note about Raiden, I think that he's not gonna be the super powerful, omnipotent Raiden that we're used to, again, due to the facts and things that happen at the end of Mortal Kombat 11. I mentioned them a couple seconds ago, they're essential, they're in every single game, they're probably on the cover. Scorpion and Sub-Zero, because, again, no fucking shit. They're the main ninjas, they're always gonna have, like, a big presence even in the story as well. I'd love to see just more and more of them just fighting it out for the fuck of it, like, ugh, our eternal life is to be spent fighting each other, yeah, that sort of thing. I love that. Been kind of a sausage fest, so let's get in two women who I think absolutely need to be in the game, as always, just in general, not even just for this game, just all the time. We have Kitana, and then right next to her, we have Jade. These two are like the essential women for the roster, in my opinion, above the likes of Sindel, above the likes of Melina, Devora, all of them. These two are like the essentials. And last out, to round out the people who absolutely need to be in the game, let's talk about Jax. Jax is like the boxer, he's the hands down, break him down, I'm gonna beat your fucking skull and give your bones, they're now forfeit. This is not a brutality, this is a fatality. <laughs> There are a couple characters who are not on the roster at all, and I'm just tell you that right now. Sonya Blade and Kano, who are two other characters who were in the game since the beginning. If not Mortal Kombat 1, they were in Mortal Kombat 2, I believe. This is for a reason. Sonya Blade, for me, is just kind of a boring character, boring moveset. She has some cool fatalities and special moves, but overall, I don't get a whole lot out of her. Kano, he's fucking dead, and for one of the characters who's coming on the evil side later on, I feel like we have a good replacement anyways. But that is all the essential good guys. Let's talk about the essential bad guys. And we need to talk about who's gonna be the big bad for this. I know he's dead, but come on, it's Mortal Kombat. They can figure it out. We got the big bad of the game, the entire game's enemy, Quan Chi. I would love to see Quan Chi as like the big bad. I'm gonna fucking kill your family guy. And Quan Chi's got some right-hand men and some right-hand women. We have right next to him, we have Scarlet. One of my favorite characters design-wise, especially her uh, alternative outfits. I always rock the purple Scarlet outfit. There's also Kobo Khan. He's a great big guy, great uh, in terms of like absolute domination within a match. Kobo Khan is the guy to go for sometimes. If it took her out of the game, it'd be a fucking crime at this point. Melina, come on, you can't just dick around with Melina with us after this time. Like the fact that she wasn't even in Mortal Kombat 11 to begin with was a crime. And if you put her in, but as DLC, that's gonna be just a fucking. I hope people riot if that happens. And finally out of the essential bad guys we have Devora, bug lady titty bondage the little fucking Mortal Kombat 10 outfit where she's uh, just in bondage she's got to be there now i would argue that these people are also essential good guys but it's some picks that's gonna upset some people and make some people think like man what the fuck i'm talking about all four of the combat kids they gotta be in this game cassie cage 
arguably one of the most important characters story-wise nowadays. Jackie Briggs is a great character to have as well, both moveset-wise. I think she has one of the better movesets out of the newer characters this generation. Takeda, he is arguably the most interesting character in terms of story moveset, overall possibilities, and Kung Jin, he just has a unique moveset and unique character. Using the bow and arrow, he's a zoner, but he can also just throw down. I fucking love Kung Jin. So the combat kids, they gotta be in there. Now this is arguably some wishful thinking. I will admit that here, but I would like to see the return of a certain group of characters in full force. And let's start that off with the person who I actually made in Mortal Kombat 11. I'm talking about Noob Saibot. And right after Noob Saibot, we gotta have my boy Tremor. I think he needs to just become a full-on character at this point. The fact that he was in Special Forces or some random ass like old game, not a game thing, then came back as DLC. Tremor is a fantastic character, truly unique look. He deserves so much better than just being a one-off DLC character. Speaking of DLC characters, uh, let's talk about arguably the most popular DLC character from Mortal Kombat's combat pack, Rain. Rain has to be there, especially as a bad guy. He's the big bad, I'm the fucking prince, you can't fuck with me guy. And I just love his design overall. Right after Rain, we have a character who not many people associate as one of the ninja, but she is one of the ninjas. She is the yellow ninja out of all this. I'm talking, of course, about Tanya. She was a DLC character in Mortal Kombat X, and then she wasn't seen for, I think, 11 even in terms of, like, story. Like, she wasn't even a background character or anything, but I believe she was mentioned in some arcade endings. Tanya is a character that needs to be there to just round out the rest of the ninja. We got Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Noob, Tremor, Melina is also in there along with Kitana and Jade, Rain, Tanya and Scarlet, but we're missing one ninja. I'm not sure how they would do this, but I would love to see the return of Smoke, not only as a good guy, but as his own unique character again. I know technically, I, it's not technically, he literally is. He is uh, basically the partner and assistant and just like other half of Noob. And that would really like create an interesting dynamic for how Noob is treated now. But I'd love to see him somehow separated from Noob and be like, hey, what the fuck, man? Go back to work with the good guys. I'd also like to point out here, I tried to create a decent balance between how many good ninjas there were versus bad ninjas. We have five on each side. We have Rain, Tanya, Melina, Tremors. Uh, noob, excuse me. Then we have Jade, Kitana, Smoke, Sub-Zero, Scorpion. Takeda is also a ninja, but I'm talking about like the colored ninjas. Now let's get on to the rest of the good guy characters. We have two good guys who are returning. They haven't been in games for a while. I think they've been highly requested, especially one of them who was literally seen in game, full render and everything. I'm pretty sure you even fought them in the Mortal Kombat X story mode at some point. Let's talk about Li Mei. Li Mei deserves to be in the game. One of the more interesting characters for her inclusion in Mortal Kombat X's story. Her design is fucking on point. It's great. But if we're talking about great designs, we gotta talk- <laughs> this is- okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be no better than a man for a second here. Mortal Kombat has some characters, male and female, and otherwise that I have been down bad for in my history. Scarlet, absolutely. When I saw Cassie Cage for the first time, hubba hubba. Devora, I'm not gonna talk about it, but yes. But there's another character who I just see the design and it's like, god damn! I'm talking about Serena. Let's bring back Serena. Again, she was in Mortal Kombat X. She was in cutscenes. She was talked about. Again, I'm pretty sure you fucking fought her. All these characters like have models in game, but you can't actually fight the fight as them. It's just it's dumb to me. But it's not just good guys who are getting returns. Actually, the bad guys are getting twice as many plus one. The bad guys, there are five returning bad guys, and I'm gonna talk about them. Up first, we have you look at this roster here, you're saying, you're thinking, okay, besides Cole Khan's, not any like really big, beefy, juicy meat sacks. So what if we brought back Kintaro? I'm pretty sure Kintaro is actually a neutral character with more of a evil leaning, but it's easy to make the big bad Shokan an evil guy. It's just that fucking easy. So not only do we got Kintaro, we have somebody who is unwillingly evil. I want to bring Nightwolf as an evil character again. Take some of the DLC characters from Mortal Kombat 11, make them full-fledged characters. So you could just honestly take all the DLC outside of guest characters and turn them into just the main roster for a game, and I think that'd be satisfying enough. But Nightwolf is a character who you need because that moveset is fucking insane. My video that I made for Nightwolf, it wasn't great quality, it had a pretty uninteresting title, I'll, I'll be the first one to admit that, but playing as Nightwolf is so goddamn fun. Speaking of DLC characters that need to just straight up be full-on roster characters, Shiva. Shiva's gotta be there. And Shiva is actually neutral and for the most part good as a character, but I think what would be really interesting is if Quan Chi did something like so fucked up, something so disturbingly evil, 
that it makes Shiva realize, Jesus Christ, I can't go against him. Not even me. I, I might as well team up with him. There's nothing I could. There's nothing I can do about it. Granted, you can just keep her neutral. So with these three uh, question marks here in the middle are meant to be as these the three neutral slots. But I think having Shiva as an evil character actually would be a lot more interesting because it put her into some very interesting situations here. Realistically, if you look at the entire roster, you have one-on-one -on -one matches all across the board here. You, of course, got Liu Kang and Quan Chi. You got the likes of Kung Lao versus him go against Kotal Khan. Just a big situation of, man, I don't know if I can do this. You know, there's so many matchups you can make here. But Shiva creates some very interesting matchups against the likes of Johnny Cage or Raiden, who was like, yo, why are you fighting on the bad side? Did you fucking get a load of this guy? What am I going to do against that? And the last two returning bad guys, two characters who need no introduction, Havoc and Raiko. These two characters have some of the most entertaining and interesting design in the entire like 3D era of Mortal Kombat for me, and it'd just be really good to have them back in evil roles. Have them be the right-hand men. To Quan Chi, because Quan Chi, he's always been on the side of people. Shang Tsung, I think he was allied with Onaga, or he was just like serving under Onaga, Shang Shao Kahn. Have Quan Chi become so utterly powerful and be able to not only have these two as assistants, but boost their power levels, make them unstoppable forces. They can be taken seriously as genuine sorry, genuine juggernauts. And now we got two new bad guys. So technically speaking, there are no new new characters for the good guys, as in no, no original new characters with the new guys, but I actually took a look at some of the comics and I tried to go out of my way to find people who were genuinely interesting, who could serve as new characters and really just bring some new interesting elements to the story mode, as well as the other uh, fighting styles. First up, we have someone who's a little more easy to explain. We have Grum. It was actually from some of the old, original Mortal Kombat comics, I believe, or at least like the second wave of their comics. Uh, in the comic storyline, he was defeated by, I believe, Kung Lao or Kwai Lang. It's uh, slipping my mind at the moment in Shang Tsung's courtyard. He's pretty easy to bring in. He doesn't have any status in the current timeline. Just have Quan Chi like go around the realms and be like, hey, you, you're Shou Kahn, but you have six fucking arms? Hell yeah, dude, come here. And then another new bad guy, I mentioned Kano's dead, so think about it, Kano's the Black Dragon guy. What if we have a new leader for the Black Dragon? What if we had Teja? Teja is another super interesting character from the comics. She fights with dual size. I believe have her be the new leader of the Black Dragon, keep the Black Dragon thing pretty, you know, like, you know, trimmed down and just have her report to Quan Chi like, hey, Kano's fucking dead, but I can fight, I can represent here, you need someone like me. Bring some confidence in. And finally, let's bring in some neutral characters. These characters will somehow in the story for reasons I'll quickly explain, be neutral to the plot and not really side with one way or the other, or they'll switch. First up, we have Kenshi. Have Quan Chi revive him against his will and sort of like try to revenant him. I forgot how the actual revenant process works. I think Quan Chi just revives and imbues them with evil or something. But have him try to do that to Kenshi, but Kenshi is able to fight it off because he has such a strong connection to spirit, uh, to the spirit realm. And have him just sort of be like stuck in between like, oh god, I want to be evil so bad, but that's a bad thing. I shouldn't fucking do that. And we're going to do kind of the same with a brand new character here. We're going to have that same thing happen with, well, I'll, I'll come back to him actually. We're going to have sort of the same thing going on. His mind is just generally corrupted by Quan Chi's evil. He helps the good guys at first, but then Quan Chi finds him and is like, Hey, check this out. Fucking amulet of uh, fucking Blaze's left testicle. He corrupts Fujin. Think about that. Someone with the sheer power and awe-inspiring strength of Fujin turned evil, but then he flip-flops to good or vice versa. Bring in a character with that level of destructive force and have them... Uh, be in story someone who just fights on both sides either against his will or trying to regain his will finally the final neutral character this is i know i'm kind of reinvent i'm really reinventing the wheel by having this be the third person i uh, brought in like this this person is revived by quan chi but in the comics he was is actually the person who slaughtered the shirai ryu and nearly killed Takeda and Scorpion as well. He'd be revived by Quan Chi and he would try to fight for the source of good because he was possessed, but he would be denied by the good guys. I'm talking about Forest Fox, another ninja character. I know, we were looking at fucking 11 ninja characters plus Takeda's number 12, technically, whatever. Uh, I think that'd be really interesting and as well would just bring a nice little 12 games, 12 ninjas, come on there. T Takeda counts just for that because that'd be a cool, cool little idea there. <laughs> but Forest Fox, he would come back and he'd be like, oh God, I have to go apologize and make good with Scorpion. Scorpion be like, hey, dude, what the fuck? Have something where Takeda's like, dad, I don't think he's possessed anymore. But Scorpion's like, nah, fuck you. 
So give Force Fox, you can play as Force Fox as well, give him a couple fights against, have him fight Scorpion, then have him fight Johnny Cage, because Johnny's like, whoa, Scorpion, uh, what the fuck's going on here? Uh, Hanzo, I got this, don't worry. And then finally, he turns to Quan Chi like, you won, fine, I'm with you. But then he goes at odds with someone such as Havoc or Raiko. He's like, you know what, I can't deal with this, fights him. That would be super interesting. But yeah, that is my Mortal Kombat 12 base roster. But you can't just have a base roster for the fighting game. You gotta have some DLC. And I have what I think is some very, very interesting DLC. Now, I do have this little DLC roster here, and I know this is not framed great at all. Fuck off. Let's not talk about it here. But we have three rows for three DLC packs. There's DLC, you also gotta think about the possibility and the inevitably of a pre-order bonus. We've had pre-order bonuses the past couple games. Goro, Shao Kahn. Let's switch it up a little bit. What if the pre-order bonus was Taven and Dagon from Armageddon? I think this would be a fucking incredible touch. Because I mentioned it in that predicting the Mortal Kombat 12 roster video that I feel like this is gonna serve as a pseudo Armageddon, both in terms of like, not as big, but the roster size as well as the story and everything. So involve Taven and Dagon, go back to the whole like chosen people to doom the realm or save it. I would really enjoy that. But moving on to the actual DLC here, DLC pack one. This is the pack that I think would be received the best and would go over the best because it's arguably the best. Let's talk about the first character here. Let's get Darius. Darius is a character who moveset wise isn't too impressive, but if you look at the story and the lore of him, he is somebody who the fans really go, but go to and think of like, oh sick, this fucking guy, hell yeah. Yeah. So I think bringing him in would be a nice little cult touch to it. Don't worry, we're not just satisfying cult touches to DLC Pack 1. DLC Pack 1 would also include Mavado. This guy was, uh, ironically, the, one of the right-hand men to Dagon, and he has one of the more edgy, cool looks that a lot of kids would be like, I want to be like that one. He's like Sasuke, but less steps. So that'd be pretty interesting. Uh, right after him, we got two, like... I don't know, not really super impressed returning characters. How about a new character that would blow your fucking socks off? How about King Gorbak of the Shao Kahn? This guy is another comic book character. He is actually, he was killed by Kotal Kahn in the comics. Being the father of Goro also adds in another interesting element there that I think would just really shape him out to be interesting lore-wise, make fans want to dig into him, check out the comics, and moveset-wise, he'd just be, just kind of combine the fighting styles of Goro and a little bit of Kintaro and just give him some more dominating in-your-face moves. But the real treat of this first DLC pack, you gotta have something that's gonna really fucking nail people in. Another series debut. I think the only time he was actually playable was like as an alternate skin of someone, but I wanna flesh him out, make him his own character. He'd essentially just be a uh, multiple martial co- martial- meh, fuck, hello? Martial arts combat styles combination straight up brawler but he'd be the best goddamn brawler because he is the great kung lao make him his own character flesh him out that will be the draw for this pack at first you thought king or back that's fucking sick no the great kung lao is the draw for this pack here because he, he's just a dominating force i mean come on realistically speaking kung lao had involvement that brought the moral combat series to a head because he defeated shang Tsung. before shang Tsung eventually came back with goro and was like hey goro fuck his shit up so having him in the game would just bring some real fucking nostalgia some real fucking interest from new fans and old fans alike and that's four main characters each of these packs have four main characters and a guest character and I'm gonna be borrowing from Mortal Kombat's ten, te, eh, Mortal Kombat's tens ideas here. Excuse me, I can't speak today. We're bringing in some horror movie characters. We're gonna be bringing in Ghostface, an original Ghostface, not like Matthew Lillard's or Skeet Ulrich's or more recently any of those. This is gonna be a Ghostface that is a straight up brawler. He's not like a martial a martial arts master or anything. He's not like a Caparea master. He's just a guy with a knife and good hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. I think some of his fatalities could be absolutely fucking brutal. Just stab and stab and stab, rip and tear. It just writes itself, come on now. So let's just move on to the next DLC pack. DLC pack two, we're gonna not, we're gonna go a little out of order here. We're gonna start with who I think is gonna be the least interesting here to people I think will be the most interesting for this pack. Um, so there are two characters that go together and they're just fan favorite characters. They're people who they're kind of treated as jokes, but if they were brought back, could have super cool movesets, could have super cool story implications if there's another aftermath sort of thing going on here. Talking about Draman and Moloch. These two go together like peanut butter and jelly. But also in this pack, we're bringing in the 13th ninja. You probably heard me say all the ninja earlier and you're saying, I'm like, wait, we're missing one. Chameleon, Chameleon is fucking here. 
Hey, Hunter, you forgot about Reptile. Yes, I know. I'm dumb. I somehow forgot about the most important one. Well, arguably the most important one. Shut up. I think it'd be really cool to, and this is sort of a cop-out, I'll admit it, but I think it'd be super cool for him to have elements of every single ninja's movesets. Give him Scorpion's Fire Breath. Give him, and he can borrow power from each of the other ninjas and bring it together as Chameleon. Bottom line, Chameleon, just have him be a jack-of-all-trades ninja there. And the most interesting part of this DLC pack, by far, will be the lead character for the DLC pack. He thought the Great Kung Lao was prestigious. How about fucking Shujinko? Shujinko has been a request ever since the game where he debuted. In that conquest mode, he was kind of miffy. But Shujinko as a character overall, technically, he's kind of a dumbass with how he brought back the return of a great fucking evil. But I think Shujinko could be super fucking fantastic. And again, if you're doing another aftermath situation, turn Shujinko into a secondary main character. Old, young, doesn't matter. And for the horror character for this, we're gonna bring in somebody who I think would be possibly the most interesting moveset-wise in the entire game, Pennywise. Pennywise capitalizes on the fear of his opponents. Depending on how technologically advanced this game could be, all his attacks, or at least some of his attacks, could change depending on the character he's fighting. Like, have one of his attacks be a basic throwing an object at the enemy, but the object changes for certain characters or all the characters. Like for Ghostface, if he faces Ghostface, have his object that he throws be a television to harken back to Scream 1. Have Pennywise go up against Kung Lao, throw the great Kung Lao's head at him. Something to that effect. Now we're getting to pack three. Pack three is sort of my personal wishes pack here, and you're gonna see that with the very first character. Um, I don't think anybody saw this coming. Wu Lei. Wu Lei is from More Combat Armageddon. He was a sub boss. Very quickly defeated, not crazy memorable, but I think I think he'd just be fucking funny to have. I don't think he even had a discerning moveset, so it'd make him somewhat something of like a weapons specialist. I just think Wu Lei would be fucking hilarious to bring in. Um, a character that I don't have a lot of personal interest in, but I know is a fan favorite by a lot of the fans, Ashra. Come on now, one of the most like visually unique female characters in the game. Ashra is very much a character that people will buy the DLC pack just to play as her, but people might also buy the DLC pack to play as Sector. Just Sector. I wanted to initially do Sector and Cyrax, but I just like Sector more. I got no explanation for that. Just Red Robot make the brain go burr. And finally, to round off the main picks before we get into the guest character, actually we'll do the guest character first. Guest character is going to be someone who I think was 100% confirmed by looking at the data of Mortal Kombat 11, but he got taken out for some reason. Ash Williams from Evil Dead. Chainsaw hand, gun, writes himself. But the character that I think out of all these DLC packs that people will buy the fuck out of the DLC for, possibly just buy the game in general to play as him, Ermac. The fact that Ermac wasn't in 11 in some way, shape, or form, especially with his banger outfit that he had, is an utter fucking crime. Like, he had a cool-ass outfit in Mortal Kombat 11. Look at this render! This is insane! I love this! Yeah, that's the DLC, and that was the uh, main roster before. What do you guys think? Do I deserve rights here? Did I miss your favorite character? Did I not put meat in it and you're mad about it? Let me know down in the comment sections below. List your entire wishlist roster down in the comments. I want to see some real crazy picks here. Surprise me. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you're staying hydrated. I'll see you next time. Later!